guys, Juggalo here. Welcome to PC News You Can Use. Um, I'm really not going to do the numbers or whatever. I'll do that on the side. But anyways, the new intro is by HVK Smoke a Cola, I believe. And I have a description or a link in the link description below to check out his YouTube channel and everything. And thank you very much. It looks badass in my opinion. But let's get into that wonderful news that we all love. Okay. Uh, pretty much Intel, you know, it's coming out with a new processor, 22 nanometer architecture. And um, I'm not going to get in too much into detail, but here it is right here. Let me go ahead and blow it up for you guys so you can see what they did with the new architecture. Okay, here, this flat-based is the old architecture right here where it's flat. And then towards the 3D version, this right here is Ivy Bridge right here. So it looks pretty nice. Also, they said it's more efficient, more performance doing it this way instead of doing it the old-fashioned way. So go ahead and read that and check it out. All right, AMD launches the Radeon HD 7800 series. Uh, pretty much it's going to be the mid-grade, I believe. And there it is. And I'm probably in the way. But hopefully I'm not. But this is what it looks like. There's tons of reviews out there on a, like a whole bunch of computer forms and everything like that. So go ahead and check that out if you are interested. Next up, Asus announces the DSL N55U Gigabit ADSL modem slash router or modem router, however you want to say it. The reason why I'm doing this is because I have an Asus one and there it is that's what it looks like and Asus has been coming out with really good routers I have the Asus RT TAC N56U router so it looks pretty awesome Asus uh, just wish you guys would support uh, DDWRT like you said you're gonna be doing for so long so I'm waiting for that to come out so go ahead and check that out if you guys need a new modem slash router check out Asus alright we have MSI with the Z77A Tag G45 motherboard right here. It's going to feature two PCI Express, pre, uh, excuse me, 3.0 times 16, but it won't be two times 16 when you populate both slots. It'll only be times eight times eight. So that's the only kind of drawback there is. All right. Next up, Patriot Memory introduces next gen Sandforce powered Wildfire SE and Wildfire Pro SSDs. Again, anytime there's new SSDs out in the market, that's always great because it's going to be competition and be improvements and all this good stuff. And the capacities will be 100 gig and 200 gig. And I'm just trying to see if they have a price point on these. SSDs and unfortunately they don't so later on I'll say probably a month or two we'll be able to see these SSDs coming out next up Asus teases with Rogue or ROG Maximus 5 and just has a little bit of a picture and that's it there it is this is all we get to see so they're trying to tease us with it alright Next step is Intel takes gaming graphics to the next level with developer tools. So anytime Intel gives developers the tools to make gaming better, that's always great. Um, especially with the in uh, excuse me, with the GPUs now being on the Intel CPUs, that's always good because Ivy Bridge is going to support DirectX 11. So that'll be like a mid gaming computer, not quite high end, but it'll be pretty good. And here's some pictures. I know you guys like pictures. So there we go. We got a lighthouse action going on. That's DirectX 9 right there. It looks like V-Sync off. Res is 800 by 600. So let me go back to the lighthouse to see which direct, uh, DirectX it is. Okay. DirectX 10 resolution 1024 by 768. 27 frames per second. Okay. That's look at another one and here's a chart right here of the performance and everything like that so that's always good let me go ahead and get out of here
Next up, Diab Diablo 3, release date. April 17th be a great birthday present, even though my birthday is April 25th. So April 17th is the release date for Diablo 3, so go ahead and look out for that. Next up, Azrock unveils the jaw-dropping X79 Extreme 11 motherboard. This is the motherboard I would get and not the Fatality Editions and all that stuff. This is strictly performance based right here. It has 16 plus 2 phase digi power VRM. So it also has two 8 pin EPS connectors. And basically, you guys don't need two 8 pin RPM connectors or whatever, or EPS connectors, excuse me. Not RPM, EPS. But basically, the only time you're going to use two. Uh, CPU 8 pins is if you're using LN2, alright? That's the only time. So if you hear guys saying, oh, you use two for extra performance, they're totally wrong. You only use two for LN2, alright? Got it, get it, good. Alright, next up, MSI ZH77A G43 is detailed, which is probably the lower end model of the G45. So here it is right here, huge picture right here. So let me see if I can blow it up. View image. Wow, it's really small for some reason. Go figure, right? So let's go ahead and scroll down. But this is a motherboard right here. So let me see what else. So it supports, it supports four USB 3.0 plus two SATA, six GB slash S uh, ports. I'm trying to see what else it has. It has HDMI, DVI, uh, basically your VGA, all that good stuff on this board. Now let's get into what I really want. But this is the GK104 die size estimated. Again, it's just an estimation. It's not a true fact until the manufacturer comes out with the actual specs and everything. So it is estimated, the die size to be estimated around 320 millimeters or about 45 millimeters smaller than Tahiti. The relative transistor density of the chip compared to AMD 28 nanometer chips were also estimated and here's a picture of them trying to figure it out and everything so there you go this is probably AMD maybe and that's Nvidia so or there yeah and then it has transistor density and all that good stuff all right now on to more Kepler news. GTX 680 final clocks exposed allegedly. So it's going to feature 100 or I should say 1536 CUDA cores and a 256 bit memory interface and also has hot clocks meaning the GPU is set to 705 megahertz but the shaders operate at 1411 megahertz the memory is roughly probably going to be two gigabytes or two gigs um, it's supposed to be clocked at 6000 megahertz giving a total memory bandwidth of 192 GB so with that said they said they're going to be coming out from what I've heard a two gig version and a four gig version I say screw the two gig bust out the 4 gig because that's what we need or I should say I need for the resolutions I'm running and everything okay next up gonna do a uh, with with Kepler they're featuring a speed boost and the best way I, I can really explain it is more or less like Intel's turbo boost or speed boost that has it on the processor so when it's not in demanding games or whatever be that at the normal clock but if it meets a demanding game it's going to basically overclock itself to give you better performance so that's the best way I can explain it and I hope that makes sense to everyone alright next up more pictures of GK 104 reference here's the cooler right here huge cooler as you can tell 
And then uh, here it is, we have the back. And again, we have the two connectors right here versus side by side, they're right on top of each other. All right, let's see what else we have. There's the back. And there it is, it's blurred out, that's pretty cheesy. But the card's right here. So, yeah. We'll see how it goes. Can't wait for it. Next up, MSI Take Seabit by Storm, pretty much. And here it is. That is a awesome looking motherboard. Let me get out of the way. But it has bullets. That's pretty much MSI's design is to make it look cool. So you have bullets for the heat sink right here. So, and it has military glass, uh, excuse me, class uh, capacitors and all that good stuff. So let's see what the specs are and or the price point. I'm looking for the price point, absolutely nothing. So, this board right here is strictly geared for the enthusiast pretty much. All right, next up, Gigabyte Demo 7, Series Ultra Durable, four motherboards at CBIT. And I don't want to explain each one because I don't run into time. So here we go. Here's one right here, the Z77XUD5H. Next picture will be the U, or I should say Z77XUD3H. And then the next one would probably be the Sniper. So this is going to be the G1 Decimal Sniper 3 motherboard that's coming out. Alright. So where's the fourth image? That's what I want to know. They'll say four, but where's the other picture at? They don't have it. Alright. AMD Catalyst 12.2 WHQL is now available. So hopefully that will give you guys a driver boost, or I should say performance boost, in the new graphics cards that are out, such as the 7800 series or the 7970, and all that good stuff. All right, and then next up, again, Ivy Bridge. Core i7 3770K Ivy Bridge offers solid performance and efficiency. So let me see if I can bring these up so you guys can see it. So here is where is it? So the 3960 is the highest, and then let me find the one I just said, the 377 is right here. So the 3960X is better than the 3077K, but I guess it's doing the best performance per buck, meaning like overclocking performance and all that good stuff. All right, next up, we have another test, 3770K is 10.3, and then the 3960X is 11, and then so on and so forth. All right. Single threaded. All right, and now I'm trying to get rid of all that crap. Okay. Got some more benchmarks and some more benchmarks, so all that good stuff. If you guys want to check it out, go ahead and be my guest. All the stories I talk about will be in the link description. Okay, next up, Intec High Current Pro Platinum 1000 PSU is pictured. It's going to be uh, modular, which is awesome. It has four 12 volt rails. Um, let's see what else. It has quad 12 volt rail design with four 40 amp rails, and then it says it comes with completely modular cabling and all that stuff but there it is right there what they did was they put a plexiglass window on it so you can see the internal components and to be completely honest I wish they would start implementing this instead of using a metal I would actually like to see a plexiglass window uh, PSU because you'd be able to see all the internal components that's, I guess that's just the geek in me but that would look really awesome here's some more pictures of it and everything like that. Okay, and that is the end of the news stories, but I am going to continue on to a news story 
that I didn't save on here. As you guys know, the EVGA SRX motherboard is going to be coming out pretty soon because they're already generating hype for this, okay? But, excuse me, I'm just letting you guys know that the Xeon processors, the multiplier and the block are locked. So that means you're only going to get maybe a 5% overclock with the new Xeon processors. Okay, so unless you feel like spending a whole bunch of money and you're not going to overclock, go ahead and get the board. But for the guys who are, I would wait till better Xeon processors come out. Also, on EVGA's website, Jacob, who is the marketing manager, he said you could put a 3990 in there or something like that. I'll correct myself in the link description below. But you could put a single one in that SRX motherboard, but it's not supported officially. It's only unofficial. So he said, yeah, you can do it, but when new drivers come out or new BIOSes, that may not be supported later on. So I'm just letting you guys know on that because I would really like to get the SRX motherboard. Trust me, I would. But if I can't overclock two CPUs, that you're basically going to spend $659 on the board. So let me go ahead and bring that up real quick. Okay, products, motherboards. I think it's 650 bucks. All right, price point is $648.99. All right, so you're basically 650. Then on top of that, how much are the GPUs, or I should say CPUs gonna cost? That'll be another 600 times two. So you're looking at 1200 for just the CPUs, and then another 650 for the motherboard itself. That's not including the RAM, the graphics card, the power supply, and all that stuff. So that's what I'm, basically, Intel, it's going to hurt the sales of this motherboard if people really know what's going on with the Xeon processors and everything. But I hope that a little advice, a little tidbit helps you guys out. And thank you, Smokacola, for making that intro. Thank you for everybody subscribing and everything. I'm up to 945 subscribers. And when I hit 1,000, I might do a big giveaway. It might be a new motherboard, probably X79 motherboard. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. It all depends on my financial situation and everything like that. But anyways, guys, comment, subscribe, rate this video, click that like button. You guys have a great day.